ladies. So I'm sponsoring and encouraging you to read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson is my favorite author. This is my favorite book, and I think you'll enjoy it if you liked We Were Liars or if you enjoyed reading The Lottery in your English class because Shirley Jackson is also the author of The Lottery. We Have Always Lived in the Castle is a fabulous book that is super spooky, has a very intriguing main character, and deals with themes of loyalty and betrayal and the experience of being an outsider in your community. So if that sounds appealing to you, or if you like mysteries and spooky things, um, you should check it out, it's fantastic. Hello, I'm Dr. Schott, and I'm sponsoring a faculty read. It's I Contain Multitudes, The Microbes Within Us, and A Grander View, view of Life by Ed Yong. This book was given to me by Lizzie Assad last year when she finished AP Bio. We, we would have spent time talking about some of the subjects in here, in particular the microbiome. You've probably heard of that. This, these are all the organisms, the microbes that live in your gut um, and on your skin to some extent, and in your mouth. And um, where science uh, medicine is discovering that uh, these microbes are very important for our health. Um, and so this is a fascinating read on that and other types of interactions that animals and plants have with microbes. I think you'll enjoy it. Walden is a great book for anybody who wants to disconnect. We talk about going off the grid and Thoreau is really the ultimate off the grid, uh, though less so than he reveals in the book, uh, but he really is all about connecting with nature and going back to the wilderness and just enjoying that experience and really thinking about the simple things in life and what is it that we really need. Hi, I'm Mrs. Gerges and I want to talk to you about a book by Dan Brown called Origin. You can't be a fraidy cat if you're going to read Dan Brown's book. The novel takes you through the twisty streets and strange arch architecture of Barcelona, Spain in search of answers to two questions. Where did we come from and where are we going? This book will challenge your beliefs, it will make you angry, it will make you gasp for breath, and it will make you fall in love with a computer named Watson. If you couldn't put down the Da Vinci Code, this is the book for you. Hello, I am really excited to be here today to talk about the Poisonwood Bible. Um, so I'm an avid reader and this is actually, I think, my favorite book that I have ever read. Um, love historical fiction, I love um, complex uh, family systems and kind of looking at different families across generations. And this book is the best of that because it talks a lot about um, shifting political powers in Africa across multiple decades and how um, Africa kind of got out from underneath the rule of other countries. Um, and it also just follows the story of different generations of one particular family that's brought to Africa because the father is an evangelical preacher. Um, and it's fascinating and I loved hearing it from the different perspectives. Hi. I'm recommending a narrative poem, an epic poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and he used to be one of the most popular poets in American history, and now he's not read so much, and the poem is called Evangeline, and it's a great story. It's about a, a refugee crisis that happens in Canada, and a couple that are engaged to be married, and when they're being relocated, they get um, separated, and Longfellow tells the story of how they finally are reunited. And to give you an idea about what it sounds like, I'm just going to read the first stanza. This is the forest primeval, the murmuring pines and the hemlocks, bearded with moss and in garments green, indistinct in the twilight, stand like druids of eld, with voices sad and prophetic, stand like harper's whore with beards that rest on their bosoms, loud from its rocky caverns, the deep-voiced neighboring ocean speaks, and in accents disconsolate answers the wail of the forest. So even if you don't like poetry, I think you'll like this. I have been excited to read Sing Unburied Sing because Jessamyn Ward is award-winning and I enjoy Southern literature. It's set in the Mississippi Delta and travels back and forth through time. Um, and I, I love the way she played with time. It feels familiar in so many ways if you enjoy Faulkner or Southern fiction, but it's very current in other ways and has a magical realism element. To me, the mark of a serious book is 
that you're still thinking about it days later or when you're not reading it, and this absolutely hits that mark. John Green is an amazing author, and his newest book, Turtles All the Way Down, is no exception. This tells a story of a girl who is struggling with anxiety disorder and OCD, and even though she has great friends and a great family, they don't realize how much she is still struggling. And what is so great about John Green is he really puts you in the mind of the person he's telling the story about. So if you have anyone in your life who's facing similar challenges, reading Turtles All the Way Down will help you understand more about the challenges that they're facing. Hello. You just caught me as I finished a fascinating book about a fascinating life. Let's see if you can guess who I just read about. He's not a rock star, but he gathered the largest crowd in human history with over one million people. One time, the crowd of young people was so enthusiastic that the helicopter pilot reported turbulence from the shouts of the young people in the stadium as he attempted to land. He was popular, but wherever he went, people tried to kill him. He took two assassin's bullets. He was stabbed, run over by a Nazi truck, and spied on by the communists. He met with leaders from all over the world, but was more at home kissing lepers that others found too revolting even to look at. Young people loved him because he told them not to settle for mediocrity, but to live lives of heroic virtue. He was authentic, loving, and demanding. And there is the key to the mystery that is Carol Votiva, whom you might know as St. John Paul the Great and his five loves. Having read Amor Toll's first book called Rules of Civility, I was very excited to read his newest book, A Gentleman in Moscow. And I loved it so much that I actually read it twice and discussed it in two different uh, book groups. And the precision of his writing, the beauty of his writing is breathtaking to me. It's about an aristocrat who lives during the time of the Russian Revolution and is forced to live in a hotel for the rest of his life. It's wonderful. Read it. So if you like historical fiction, this is a great book for you. It's also set in Tennessee, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about your state history, it's great for that too. It takes place in Memphis, Tennessee, and the book is about five children who are born on a shanty boat on the Mississippi River. And when their mom goes into birth with what would have been their sixth brother or sister, their parents are forced to leave to seek medical help. And over the course of the night, the children are kidnapped and they are brought to an orphanage. And they're told at the time that they are going to be returned to their parents, but unfortunately they are not. And as it turns out, the orphanage is not a good place for them. And then the book fast forwards to present day, and I'm gonna leave it at that, but it's a great book. It's a page turner. You'll learn about history. It's historical fiction, so it has some truth to it. And I highly recommend it. Hi girls. The book I would like to recommend you read is called Flying Lessons and Other Stories but there are no lessons about flying airplanes. Flying Lessons is a book of short stories that are all related to diversity and social justice. But here's the kicker. The stories are written that are meaningful, real, and they really leave you thinking. Here are three lines that begin three very different stories. Blame my uncle Kenneth. Everybody else does. It's a lot of pressure to pick a good elf name. And Nanny wears a fur coat to the beach. This is a book for all ages and stages. I love it, and I think you will too. Hi, I'm Tom Murphy, and I wanted to tell you about a book I just finished a month or so ago called The Weight, written by Lisa K. Presley, a Nashville author. The Weight is a historical fiction set in the 1920s, 1940s, about a young girl named Bonnie McCaverty who grew up in Smithville, Tennessee. She moved to Nashville to experience big city life, where she met uh, a young man and when World War II broke out, she found herself waiting for not one, but two uh, very important men in her life. I really enjoyed all of the Nashville um, references in the book, whether it was Broadway Street, Sylvan Park, or the Bellmead Country Club. I hope you find time to enjoy the wait. Every family has its problems, but in The Nest by Cynthia Sweeney, you'll meet the Plum family. 
a set of four incredibly dysfunctional siblings who've planned their whole life to spend the nest, which is the family trust fund. But what happens when one sibling's poor choice changes everything for everyone? You'll have to read to find out. If you enjoy um, a good read and you want to read a book that has to do with social justice and is told from the perspective of a teenage girl, I encourage you to read The Hate You Give. And if you do read it and you do enjoy it, I would love to talk about it with you in the fall. Happy reading. Hi, I recommend Little Fires Everywhere. It's a book I thoroughly enjoyed. It starts with the end and then it goes backwards. And it's a story of a family and some family dynamics that unfold. And it is a mystery that does or does not get resolved at the end. But I highly recommend um, sitting back in the summer and having it as an enjoyable read with some interesting character development and some great teenage girl drama. Please go for it. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be the daughter of the God of the Sun? To be able to destroy your rivals? To change God and men into beasts and monsters? And finally, to date the most clever men and gods? Read Circe by Madeline Miller and enjoy the adventure. This year I'm recommending Peak. Hopefully you've learned at Harpeth Hall that experts aren't born, they're made. But how do you become an expert? Uh, an academic subject or a sport or a musical instrument? Well, there's no greater expert on expertise than Anders Ericsson. And he's written this great book that I think is important. It's interesting. And if you're interested in becoming more of an expert at something, anything, I think it's a great book to check out this summer. Okay, this summer you need an audiobook. You need something that you can listen to while you're sitting by the pool or traveling with your family, something to tune everyone out. So I've got the best audiobooks for you. It's a three-part series, um, and it's about outer space. So there's sci-fi, there's action, there's romance. If you like Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Wars or Princess Bride or 10 Things I Hate About You, any kind of snarky love comedy going on, these are the books for you. They're fantastic audiobooks. It's a full cast, so every character has a different voice. Um, there is an artificial intelligence defense network, Aiden, who might be falling in love with a human girl. So it's a little uh, exciting and creepy at the same time. So listen to these books. They're fantastic. I can see why he loves her. Error. Error. Protect. Prioritize. Yes. Yes. Protect. Prioritize.